Model steam engines, top tip time, part 27. This episode contains lots of tips about making a heat shield, which is also a mounting for a gas burner. Here's what it's going to look like. This title clip was taken from the test of the finished unit. Before making the heat shield, I had to repair the ceramic which was damaged. That was nothing of a job. Making a heat shield like this prevents the burning of the sides of the boiler. And like a few of my past girlfriends, it's simple and easy. On with the show. The ceramic material fitted to burners like this is very fragile, and over the years this one has sustained some damage, but it's a fairly easy fix. First of all, I'm removing all of the screws that hold the ceramic in place. This is not a very good way to hold this ceramic stuff, because these screws don't support the ceramic very well. But that's the way it is, and I have to work with it. I need to take out these screws anyway to make a mounting for the ceramic burner. And with all the screws removed, it should be an easy job to shake out the ceramic. But in actual fact, the ceramic didn't want to come out. But I got there in the end. Here are the two parts of the broken ceramic. I'm going to attempt to super glue them back together, but this generally doesn't work. The ceramic is very porous and just soaks up the super glue, and then there's nothing left to stick to the other part. I'm going to apply plenty of this very thin super glue to the damaged part. The general idea is to apply so much super glue that it soaks into the ceramic, and once this is set, then I should be able to successfully stick most of the pieces together. I'll find out if this is successful later on. How am I going to make the mounting? Well, I found a couple of pieces of brass in the plastic bag marked assorted brass sheet. It's very useful to have assorted pieces of brass in the workshop, and I buy this from Blackgate's Engineering. This is a lathe parting tool, and what's this got to do with the job? Uh, nothing at all. I'm just using it as a straight edge to mark a line on the brass. I've also marked a position to drill some mounting holes in the brass, and these are one and a half inches in from the edge. Caution, whenever you drill holes in pieces of brass sheet, do not hold it in your fingers like I'm doing. I'm showing this just to illustrate what a stupid thing it is to do. But thankfully, my common sense prevails and I have a piece of steel bar in the machine vise at the side of the piece of wood that I'm drilling on, which allows the drilling of holes a fixed distance from the edge, and if the drill does grab the brass, it won't spin round. For the next part of the job, I put the piece of brass in my vise, which is in the outer part of the workshop, and using a soft hammer with the hide side first, I bend the brass sheet at 90 degrees to itself. Then I use the copper side to sharpen up the bend. I repeat this process for both of the pieces of brass and as you can see, the brass is fitted into the vice jaws up to the line that are made with the parting tool. The process for bending the second part is identical to bending the first. I use the hide side, the softer side first, because it doesn't mark the metal quite as badly and I only use the copper side to sharpen the edge. Here's the job so far. You will also notice that I've rounded the edges. Whenever I work on sheet metal, I always remove sharp edges from the guillotine process and also around the edges. In this clip, I'm holding the pieces of brass against the burner body and scribing another line. I'll show you why later on. The next part of this job is to mark the holes accurately on the brass to correspond with the three holes in the burner. A pair of strong spring clips are a good idea for this. They will hold it in place while I use the edge of the scriber like this to transfer the positions of the holes to the brass sheet. As the positions of the holes are now marked on the brass sheet, the marks are very small. I didn't use engineer's blue for this, it wasn't worth the trouble. I'm just spotting them with a felt tip pen, so I don't make a mistake and accidentally drill the holes in the wrong place. It's very easy to confuse an existing mark on the brass sheet for one of the marks that you need to drill on. I do speak from experience as I've done this many times. The next part of the job is to apply some super glue to the actual body of the burner. And with a bit of luck, this will help to support the damaged ceramic. Once I fitted the piece of ceramic back into the burner, I ran some super glue around the edge for further reinforcement. Before fitting these pieces of brass to the burner using the original screws, I took them into the outer part of the workshop, put them in the vise and bent them at about 30 degrees. That's why I scribed the line using the burner base as a guide. That's one side done, now time for the other side. What's this all about with the brass then? Why didn't I just make a simple angled mounting? Well I thought at the same time I could make a bit of a heat shield which will just protect the paint on the outer part of the boiler shell from being burnt away. In a video that I made a while ago called 
building a Stuart 504 boiler plant, I made a really comprehensive heat shield using stainless steel. But this boiler is a bit smaller than a 504 and the burner is very much smaller than the one I used on the plant. I think that this brass heat shield should be sufficient for this size of burner. I sat the burner assembly on the baseboard in the approximate position and then I placed the boiler shell over the top of it, then carefully removed the boiler shell, held the burner in place and scribed the position for the mounting screws through the holes using the right angled end of my scriber. Now it's time to drill four holes on the marks that I made, but it's very important to drill them a pilot hole size for the wood screws I'm going to use. And after drilling the pilot holes, I drilled through the top of the metal plate, being careful just to drill the metal plate, using a 5 32nds of an inch twist drill, which is big enough to let the screws through. After a quick sweep up, it's time to screw the assembly down to the base. It's nearly time to test the burner. I've moved the entire plant into the outer part of the workshop and it's currently sat on my old smart and brown lathe which is awaiting collection by a man with a suitable truck to lift it. Before I get lots of pointless questions of people asking, well isn't the burner going to melt the brass? No. And aren't the screws going to transfer the heat through the baseboard into the wooden part? Well, yes, but only a small amount. Don't forget that this 3mm steel plate is also quite a good and effective heat sink. In this clip you can see the burner inside the boiler shell. I've fitted a longer bolt to the Venturi to secure the gas jet so you can turn it with a spanner. Here I'm fitting a Mamod type drive band to drive the generator. Bear in mind when you put these together it's a left hand thread. These bands are great, I remember using them as a child and I was always amazed how the joint is almost invisible. As it turns out the length of this drive band is perfect to drive this generator. I think you can get slightly thicker drive bands from Stuart models, but for this job the Mamod one will be fine. I've connected some compressed air and I'm going to test the generator. According to my test meter the generator is giving out just over 6 volts which is fine. That's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website. Click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.